Then it goes a little yeah. something like What is the Servings of Lay Up of 2002? The Servings of Lay Up of 2002 is a law. The U.S. Congress passed on July 30 of the year to help protect investors from fraudulent financial reporting by corporations. Also known as the SOX Act of 2002 and the Corporate Responsibility Act of 2002. It mandated strict reforms to existing securities regulations and impose the new penalties on lawbreakers. Ang Sarbanes Oxley Act of 2002 daw ay isang batas na pinasa ng Kongreso ng US noong Holy 30 upang protektahan ang mga mamumuhunan mula sa mapanlinlang na pag-uulat sa pananalapi ng mga korporasyon. Ang act na ito ay nakuha sa pangalang dalawang sponsor na si Senator Paul S. Sarbanes and Representative Michael G. Oxley. Understanding the Service Oxley Act The rules and enforcement policies outlined in the Service Oxley Act of 2002 amended or supplemented existing laws dealing with security regulation, including the security Exchange Act of 1934 and other law enforced by the Securities and Exchange Commission, the new law set our reforms and addition in four principal areas. Number one is corporate responsibility. Number two, increased criminal punishment. Number three, accounting regulation. And number four, new protections. Major provisions of the Service of Lake Act of 2002. The Service of Lake Act of 2002 is a complex and lengthy piece of legislation. Three of its key provisions are commonly referred to by their section number Section 302, Section 404, and Section 802. Dahil sa service of the Act of 2002, maaari makulong ang mga, mga opisyal ng corporation ng na, nasadyang nagpapatunay na ng mga maling pahayag sa pananalapi. Section 302 of the Service of the Act of 2002 mandates that senior corporate officers personally certify in writing that the company's financial statements comply with Securities and Exchange Commission Disclosure requires and fairly present in all material aspects the operation and financial condition of the issuer. Officers who sign off on financial statements that they know to be inaccurate are subject to criminal penalties, including prison terms. Section 404 of the Service of Lay Act of 2002 requires that management and auditors establish internal controls and reporting methods to ensure the ad adequacy of those controls. Some critics of the law have complained that the requirements in Section 404 can have a negative impact on publicly traded companies because it's often expensive to establish and maintain the necessary internal controls. Section 802 of the Service of Slave Act of 2000 contains the three rules that affect record, record keeping. The first deals with destruction and falsification of records. The second strictly defines the retention period for storing records. The third rule outlines the specific business records that companies need to store, which includes electronic communications. Next is Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. What is the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board? The Public Company Accounting Oversight Board or PCAOB 
is a non-profit organization that regulates auditors of publicly traded companies. Ang layunin ng Public Company Oversight Board ay mabawasan ng ang panganib sa pag-audit. Understanding the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board The Public Company Accounting Oversight Board was established with the passage of the Service Act of 2002. The Act was passed in response to various accounting scandals of the late 1990s. The board protects investors and other stakeholders of public companies by ensuring that the auditor of a company's financial statements has followed a set of strict gui guidelines. Public Company Accounting Oversight Board Advisory Groups The Public Account Company Accounting Oversight Board Ad has two advisory groups, the Standing Advisory Group and the Investor Advisory Group. Ang tungkulin ng dalawang grupo ito ay magbigay ng payo at pananaw. Number one, the Standing Advisory Group meet semi-annually to discuss data and technology, cybersecurity, corporate culture, communication of public company accounting oversight board standards, the governance and leadership of quality control systems, current or emerging issues affecting audits or auditors, and implementation of the new auditor's report. Number two, the investor advisory group meets once a year to discuss the group's strategic plan, quality control standards, implementation of new auditor's report, and implementation of form. The Public Company Accounting Oversight Board has developed a five-step strategic plan which is laid out in its annual, annual report. The five-step plan is composed of the following. Number one, drive improvement in the quality of audit service through a combination of prevention, detection, deterrence, and remediation. Number two, anticipate and respond to, to the changing environment, including emerging technologies and related risks and opportunities. Number three, enhance transparency and accessibility through proactive stakeholder engagement. Number Four, pursue operational excellence through efficient and effective use of our resources, information, and technology. And last, number five, develop, empower, and reward our people to achieve our shared goals. Next topic is auditor and analyst and independence. How independent auditors work? An independent auditor either works for a public accounting firm or is self-employed. An auditor examines financial statements and related data, analyzes business operations and processes, and provides recommendations on achieving greater efficiency. They evaluate company assets for impairment and proper valuation and determine tax liability. Ensuring compliance with tax code and laws. The Service Oxlade Act of 2002 was passed after Enron, WordCom, and several other technology companies collapsed due to accounting improprieties. The goal of Service Oxlade was to improve corporate governance and restore the faith of companies' investors. However, mainly in the business world are agents service Oxley, seeing it is as political motivated move leading to, to a loss of risk taking and com competitiveness. Next is whistleblower protection. First, what is a whistleblower? A whistleblower is a anyone who has and reports insider knowledge of illegal activities occurring in an organization. Whistleblowers can be employees, suppliers, contractors, clients, 
or any individual who became aware of illegal business activities. Whistleblowers are protected from retaliation under various programs created by Occupational Safety and Health Administration, Service of Oxley Act, and the Securities and Exchange Commission. The protection of federal employees is under the Whistle Protection of Act of 1989. Whistleblower many organizations dedicate themselves to addressing whistleblowing, but some organizations specialize in specific aspect of it. Whistleblower protection. Whistleblowers are protected by retaliation should be information provided confirmed to be true. This protection includes prohibiting the accused company from taking adverse or harmful action agents, the reporter. Antagonistic activities include demotion, termination, reprimands, and other punitive reactions. The whistleblower protection also covers prohibition against the company pursuing legal action against the whistleblower to recoup losses incurred during the investigation or impose penalties.